Welcome to Bloop and Dirty. In this video, we will take a look at the Raspberry Pi AI camera. So before we get started, let's clarify what's actually the difference between the normal Raspberry Pi camera module, at the moment we have the Raspberry Pi camera module 3 available, and the Raspberry Pi AI camera. So while it's true that both are cameras, both can take pictures and so on, there is a major difference once it comes to AI. So while you could technically do everything you can do with the Raspberry Pi AI camera, also with the normal Raspberry Pi camera module, you would always need a Raspberry Pi in combination with this camera. And when I say you need a Raspberry Pi, I'm not just talking about like using it to look at pictures, look at results, I'm meaning for actual processing. So the traditional camera can take the picture, then needs to transfer the picture to the Pi and all the AI stuff needs to happen on the Raspberry Pi. All the analysis, all the neural nets need to run on the Raspberry Pi. And that's exactly what's different with the Raspberry Pi AI camera. So to achieve this, they're using the Sony IMX500 chip, the one you can see here in the picture. So let's take a look what the IMX500 can actually do. So it is the actual sensor and it's providing 12.3 megapixels of resolution. It is also providing all the computing power on the chip itself. So all the neural nets being used to process pictures are running right on this very same chip where the camera sensor itself is located, the IMX500. This whole setup, basically doing all the AI processing on the very end of the chain, like on the sensor itself, no matter if it's a camera or any other object detection or whatever, this type of principle is called edge AI. So you're doing all the AI stuff on the edge, on the very last device where the system interferes with the reality. And since this is the very USP of the IMX500 and the Raspberry Pi AI camera, let me dive a little bit deeper into how it works and why it's important. So traditionally you would have a pixel or a sensor and that's basically the sensor that's taking the picture, the actual camera. And if you then want to do any AI stuff as shown before with the normal Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi camera module 3, you would need the AI engine and the memory down at your Raspberry Pi. So from a latency point of view, there's a bunch of stuff happening in between. So this communication between the sensor and your AI engine and all the memory you need and so on needs to take place via some type of cable, some type of connection. And to do so, you need an interface or several interfaces at the sensor. And even more, you need interfaces on the main compute engine. Also, in case of a Raspberry Pi, it's not just a small microcomputer, it's also a microcomputer. This means there's an operating system running, there's a bunch of other stuff that the Pi needs to manage. So allocating resources to this specific task is not, let's say, the most direct way and the most fastest way when it comes to latency. So what the IMX500 does now, it's basically eliminating all those steps in between, all those translation and transmitting and again translation steps all this is eliminated and the pixel the sensor is directly fused onto a chip that's dedicated to all the AI engine and all the memory needed to execute it. So that's not just great from a packaging and a latency point of view that's also enabling us to use the camera and all the AI features with less powerful boards. But before we get into this let's take a look on what the IMX500 can actually do and therefore what the Raspberry Pi camera can actually do now. So the Raspberry Pi AI camera comes off the shelf with some functions. One is pose recognition. So it basically can identify the parts of your body like arms and body and legs and stuff like this and can tell you what type of direction you're pointing at. Next up and big one is object detection. So no matter what type of object it is, also the Raspberry Pi picture itself on the left hand side is indicating this that it can identify objects. And I think this one is a very fun one and a very approachable one where everybody can just play around with very quickly and you can think of many use cases like a robot sorting stuff or a little rover understanding the environment around it. So I think those two are already quite nice features. The last one is not really a feature, it's more about accessibility because you could use a Raspberry Pi Zero or any other Raspberry Pi model except the Raspberry Pi Pico as far as I'm aware to use the Raspberry Pi AI camera. So again, since all the computing is already located at the AI camera, you don't need a lot of compute on your actual Raspberry Pi. So therefore, you can connect it right away to your Raspberry Pi Zero, as they also indicate with this adapter cable they show in the official picture, that's actually the connector to fit to the Raspberry Pi Zero. 
and not the one, the big one that would fit to the Raspberry Pi 5, 4 or 3B Plus or whatever. But of course you can just hook up a big one to connect directly to your Raspberry Pi 5, 4 or whatever. So I think what Raspberry Pi did here is really great because it basically does the same to AI and picture recognition and so on. What Raspberry Pi did to the makerspace and microcomputer and coding and sensors and so on before, it's making it accessible. So while you had to hook up a bunch of libraries, a normal camera, a powerful Raspberry Pi and so on in the first place, now you can just get a Raspberry Pi AI camera and get started right out of the box with some motivating features already on board and then take it from there to build your own networks, to build your own applications and AI features. You can even teach it to recognize your own specific objects. I already have a specific use case for one of my projects in mind. So I'm really looking forward to use this camera. I put in an order for mine already and while the official price tag is 70 US dollars, which I think is quite accessible for a lot of people, if you consider you have already a Raspberry Pi or you even only need a Raspberry Pi Zero, which you can get for below 20 bucks, it's pretty nice. But I have to mention that for mine, I had to pay 84 euros, I think, plus shipping at, as of right now. Maybe the price will drop later on, or maybe there's some taxes in between, I'm not sure. But that's what I paid for at the official Raspberry Pi retailer at the moment. And also I could only put in a pre-order and not yet a proper order. So I can't wait to get my hands on one of those cameras and play around with it myself. I wasn't into the whole AI game so far, but since it's made so accessible now by Raspberry Pi, I'm really motivated to get into it and actually already thinking about many use cases where I could use AI to get around some of my problems I have in some projects. But before we close this video, I want to take a quick moment to take a look at the Raspberry Pi website and the Sony website to show you guys a little bit more where we're at at the moment with all the tools that you need to use the camera. So that's the Raspberry Pi website about the Raspberry Pi AI cam. You can see a bunch of pictures, again highlighting the actual sensor, the IMX, and you get some ideas of what it will look like. And then at the, ver the very end, it's saying, discover Sony's AI services. Local Studio walks you through the necessary steps to efficiently label, train, and produce AI models. So that's actually what I'm really looking for because of course maybe my objects are not in there I'm pretty sure because I want to basically identify different type of plants and if they have any sicknesses and so on that are visible on the on the leaves and stuff like this so I really need to label and train some sort of network myself so that's exactly what I need and I'm ready to get into it and as soon as you hit pr find out more you get redirected to the Sony side the Atrios I hope I pronounce it correctly they, I think, summarize a bunch of tools under the name Local Studio and they specifically forward you to Brain Builder. And as you can see, it's coming soon and not yet available, which I think is a bit of a bummer, but I hope it will be updated very soon. I will update you down in the comments as soon as it's available. Of course, there are also a bunch of other tools available. And actually, if you go back to the documentation of Raspberry Pi AI camera, you get a get started guide and here you actually have all the terminal commands to start everything like installing all the firmware for the IMX 500 and so on and so on. And there you can see already the first ideas like how it's recognizing the chair as an object and also you have an example of how the pose recognition looks like identifying the body, the legs and the arms. So that's already there and that's ready to work out of the box to play around. But again, if you want to get started and yeah, play around with your own models and try to get more into this space, the, the recommended kit is not yet available, even though it mentions in documentation that it's capable to work with many different tools and you could basically build everything bottom up. But again, I would rather wait for the recommended kit since I'm not an AI expert, I'm new to AI and all those different tools that are available. So I would be happy to have something easy to digest and slowly creep my way into the topic. So that's it for today's video. I hope this summary was interesting for you and let me know down in the comments what you would do with the AI camera and what kind of use cases or even upgrades to existing projects you have in mind. If you want to see the full video of actually using the camera as soon as it arrived, make sure to be subscribed and you get a notification once I have the video ready. Thanks for watching and see you next time.